Hi everyone, Timo here. Today I want to talk about how to find the best FFP settings for your direct drive wheelbase. So tell me, what's your flavor? Do you like your FFP crisp, granular, detailed, impactful, heavy, or even everything at the same time? To put an immediate stop to any sort of myth-making, let me say this in advance. In my opinion, there are no perfect FFB settings. Everyone has their own hardware, aka SIM gear, their preoccupations, expectations, preferences. What is unrealistically hard for one person, the other one pushes away with his or her pinky. One person only looks at everything through the lens of competitiveness, while the other simply cares about immersion. One could say there are as many perfect FFP settings as there are sim racers. Accordingly, my little guide here also makes no claim to objectivity. I mean, how could it? It is as subjective and individual as you and I are. Nevertheless, my three tips are based on insights I've gained by now having used the CSLDD for almost half a year and been in sim racing and driving with wheelbases for I don't know how many years. Insights and tips which I try to present here in a comprehensible way and which are primarily meant to help you find your own very best settings. If they work for you, great, awesome, you're welcome. If not, no problem, then <laughs> at least that is your takeaway. But okay, you're probably not here for my pseudo metaphysical excesses on sim racing, but because you're looking for tangible input. So let's lay our hands down on it. Tip one. More is not necessarily better. Turning everything up to 10 may help you with a workout, but let's be honest, it has little to do with a realistic driving experience. The CSLDD, for instance, has a maximum output of 8 newton meters. Compared to the big DD bases out there with well over their 20 nm, this sounds like Kindergarten. But in fact, 8nm is more than I need. For instance, when I drive a vintage or classic formula car with 100 FFB on my CSLDD and 100% in game force for the car, it is incredibly hard to do this consistently, error free, and fast. It simply tires me disproportionately quickly and if things go really bad, it can even incur serious tensions or injuries. Have you ever tried out BeamNG on full force? I mean, that's dangerous, isn't it? And now imagining I do this with the biggest SimuCube DD base. Whoa. Also remember, it's not for nothing that eSports drivers deliberately turn down their FFB. Because they know exactly what they have to do to be competitive for as long as possible. And they definitely do not want their arms to tire faster than their brains. So long story short, your takeaway here is maximum force is neither not realistic nor Competitive. You've just done a 130.54. Sector three times okay. Tip two use the Fanatec recommendations. Fanatec has published settings recommendations for all their wheelbases on a per game basis. You will find them in the Fanatec forums, and of course, you can find the links for all the games I play in the description below. As Fanatec says, 
in the preface of each game thread, the recommended settings are considered to be reasonable baseline values for the respective game and hence make a good starting point for further tweaking your individual settings. For instance, for Assetto Corsa, they recommend to set the CSLDD thus. Please also note that there are also recommended in-game settings below, which always have to be taken into account. What's more is that AC, as every proper sim, has a wide variety of cars and tracks. Hence, it's simply not possible that one and the same setting will work for every car track combination. I mean, that's crystal clear, isn't it? A road car on a free roam track should not and cannot feel the same as a Formula One car in Monza. In a word, my takeaway for you here is this, wheelbase and in-game FFB settings always work together. Tip number three, every car needs its own settings. Like so many aspects in life, also with FFB, the Pareto principle applies. Meaning that in 20% of the time, you can achieve 80% completion. And for the remaining 20% to putable perfection, it is then completely up to you how much more you're willing to invest. Because normally 80% work perfectly fine. In AC, for instance, but also in almost all other sims, the FFB strength can also be set per car in-game. Either via an in-game app or a slider setting somewhere in the setup menu. So whether AC, ACC, AMS2 or race room, depending on the car I drive, I always adjust the in-game FFB until it feels right for me. Also, I always check and adjust the steering sensitivity, though that not in-game but in the Fanatec driver. For example, a modern Formula car has, for me, normally a 360, a GT, 540 or 720, and an average road car, 1080 degree sensitivity. In most sims, there are also further in-game FFB settings, such as curb, road, slip or ABS effects, forces for understeer, certain filters or speed sensitivity forces, as well as low force boost and last and least, the super valuable menu spring force. And let me tell you what, it is completely up to you to dial them in or not. There is no law for that. It's just recommendations. There is no one truth, it's just opinions. So when you feel a need for say an understeer effect or a curb effect when driving a Fiat about 500 SS and this works for you, then excuse me, fuck the recommendations. Because you don't have to please anyone but yourself. And what feels right to you is right. So my takeaway for you for tip number three is individual per game per car settings are king. So guys, that's it for today. Thanks a lot for listening. Thanks a lot for watching and have a nice day. See you on the next one. Bye.